We left off last time with PHP code that opened a connection to a MySQL database. Let's now retrieve data from it. We'll start off by working with that database.php file we created, and then we'll look at how to integrate that code into our Shirts for Mike project files. Browse to localhost slash database.php in your browser. If you have your connection string correct, then you will see this positive message. If you instead see an error message, then make sure MySQL is running and look back at the previous badge to get everything sorted out. Open this database.php file in your text editor. Right now, we have a try-catch block that creates the connection. Let me show you two lines of code that you will commonly see after a PDO object is created. They both call methods defined in the PDO class that all PDO objects will have available. Let's remove this troubleshooting line of code here. Remember that to call a method on an object, you first specify the object name, followed by the two characters that together look like a single arrow. After that, you specify the method name. In this case, that's exec, short for execute SQL command. This method runs a SQL command on the database to which the object is connected. Remember that methods are like functions. They can receive arguments. The exec method receives one argument, the SQL command you want to execute as a string. This SQL command defines the character set to be used for sending data to and from the database. Don't worry if you don't know anything about different character sets. Just know that UTF-8 is the standard character set that you'll want to use almost all the time. The other line of code you'll often see defines what happens when PDO encounters errors. We saw last time that an exception is thrown when PHP can't connect to the database, but other errors, like an invalid query, do not throw exceptions by default. We can call a method on the PDO object to change that. Let's put this new command here above the previous one. The method we want to use is called setAttribute. This method has two arguments, the first for the attribute you want to set. The syntax for this will probably look a little strange to you, but you'll just have to trust me on this one for now. We'll talk a little about this double colon syntax later on. This tells our PDO object that we want to change the error mode. The second argument is for the value you want to give that attribute. This value for the error mode attribute tells our PDO object to throw an exception whenever an error is encountered. All right, let's continue on. We'll leave this error message in place. If there is a problem connecting to the database, we still should stop the code from running. We can remove this positive message here. If the connection is successful, we'll just want our code to continue running along. We'll next start another try-catch block. We'll put all our code that interacts with an external system inside a try-catch block, and it's a good idea to have a separate try-catch block for each point of interaction. This next point of interaction is to run the query that retrieves the products. The database object we have created contains a method for doing this, the query method. The query method has one argument, the query you want to run. You pass that query into the method as a string. Remember that you surround strings in a set of quotation marks like this. Then you specify the query that you want to run. We'll type here the query we looked at earlier that will retrieve the name and the price of each product. This method call returns the results of the query. We can put that return value into a variable named results so that we can work with it. We'll look at this return value in detail shortly. It's a little more complicated than you might expect. But let's first recap. This block of code here connects to the database. If it's successful, we'll have an object named db that can interact with the database. 
If it fails because the database is down or the password is wrong or something, a message will be displayed and the program will end. Continuing on, this next block of code tries to run a query against the database. If it's successful, we'll have the results of the query contained in this object here named results. Let's echo out a temporary message here. If this query fails, it will throw an exception, and we'll need to handle that exception in the catch block. Let's just echo out a message here and end the program for now, as before. Let's go back to the browser, just to make sure things are looking good. The query ran successfully, so we are displaying this confirmation message from the try block. Let's change the query to something invalid, just to make sure the catch block is working correctly. Because this query is invalid, we're getting this error message just like we would expect. I'd say everything looks good. Let's now change that query back to the way it should be. There's one last thing we should add to our query, an order by clause. MySQL will often return results in the same order you entered them, but it's never safe to assume that. Our products array was ordered by a numeric skew, so let's keep that the same. This query should now return the products in the same order that they were in the products array. We now have code in place that connects to the database and runs a query against it. We have the results of the query in a variable named results. Let's take a look at that variable next.